In Matthew 25, it says the kingdom of heaven is like ten virgins who went forth to meet the bridegroom. In verses 6 through 10, we're told the bridegroom came at midnight and the five virgins went in with him to the marriage. This is a reference to the rapture, the escape or flight of the woman in Revelation 12, 14. It's the gathering of the elect in Matthew 24, 29 through 31, when one will be taken and the other left in Luke 17, 29 through 37, and when the people in the book will be delivered in Daniel 12, 1. This is also confirmed in Job 34, 20 and Psalm 119, 62. The Bible tells us this event will happen at the end of the Great Tribulation of Days, at the start of the final 42 months, and here in Matthew 25, 6, we're told it will happen at midnight. However, in that same chapter, in verse 13, it tells us that we cannot know the day or hour that it will happen. This is also evident in Matthew 24, 36 and 50, Mark 13, 32, and Luke 12, 46. We're told we cannot know the day or hour of the event, but Matthew 25 tells us it will happen at midnight. Notice the word translated as midnight in Matthew 25 is different from the word used in Mark 13. In Matthew 25, the word is 3319, which means in the middle or midst of, and it's used along with word 3571, which means night. In other words, it's saying the bridegroom will come in the middle of the night. However, in Mark 13.35, we're told we cannot know whether the Master God will come in the evening or at midnight or in the morning. The word translated as midnight here is 33.17, which literally means midnight. So, Mark tells us that we cannot know the hour or even the time of the day that it will happen. And the reason for this is explained in Luke 17, verses 31 and 34. It says the event will happen both in the day and the night. This is because it's a worldwide event. On one side of the earth it will be daytime, and on the other side of the earth it will be night. The time of the day will be different for every place on earth. This is one reason why we cannot know the hour of the impact. The hour of the impact will be different for everyone all over the earth. So when Matthew 25 tells us the bridegroom will come at midnight, it's not talking about the time of day. There are actually two different words there, one meaning middle and the other meaning night, and the word for night also includes figurative meanings such as the time when work ceases, the time of death, the time of deeds of sin and shame, the time of moral stupidity and darkness, and the time when the weary and the drunken give themselves up to slumber. So midnight can literally refer to the end time itself, but in addition to that, it may be giving us another clue when it specifically tells us that midnight is not a day or hour in verse 13. These two measurements of time, days and hours, are measurements of different celestial clocks. An hour represents the orientation of Earth's rotation on its axis relative to a specific place on Earth, and a day, in any given month, represents the location of the moon revolving around the Earth. The prophecy tells us neither of these cycles represent the bridegroom's midnight. So the next cycle to look at then would be the revolution of the earth around the sun, as the prophecy tells us to measure it. The biblical year consists of 12 months, each month being one cycle of the moon. We're told to observe the first month of the year in the spring after the turn of the season, which means the 12th month occurs during the turn of the season, the equinox right before the start of the first month. But is there any evidence that midnight refers to the twelfth month? The idea of midnight as the twelfth hour started in ancient Egypt. The book of Matthew was written between 80 and 90 CE, and Jesus said these words prior to that during the Roman Empire. Midnight as the twelfth hour was arguably in use at that time under Roman influence. Another important clue is in John 11.9 where Jesus tells us that there are 12 hours in a day. In Ezekiel 4.6 and Numbers 14.34, we're told that one day can also equal a year. If one day is a year, and there are 12 hours in one day, prophetically, then there are 12 hours in one year, each hour corresponding to a month. The final hour of the year, then, would be the 12th month. In Revelation 18.10, it says the final judgment of Babylon will occur in one hour. Verse 21 tells us this is an asteroid impact. In other words, the hour of Babylon's destruction 
is the final hour, and while it can refer to a literal hour, it can also refer to one month. The twelfth month is the twelfth hour, which according to Jesus, is the final hour of the day. In the prophecy, the twelfth month also represents the final hour. This is why the twelfth month is an important watch. For more information on the ancient biblical calendar and or the asteroid timeline in the Bible, visit indigoflower.net. Thank you so much to those who make this work possible. If you like this video, please consider providing support. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you again soon.